Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to identify, let me remember what I'm talking about. Oh, identify the end behavior by using the leading coefficient test. Now, basically, when identifying the leading coefficient test, there's a couple things that we need to identify. First, we need to make sure that we're dealing with a polynomial, which all my examples are. But you might have a problem where, I don't know, they're giving you something to say, you know, hey, find the leading coefficient or determine it's a polynomial. So remember, all polynomials are, um, polynomial functions are, um, are functions when they when every single exponent has non-negative powers okay meaning they can't be fractions they can't be negative so once we have uh, polynomials which all we have here the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have them everything in descending order um, basically meaning the largest power first then going on in descending order and remember the power is different than the coefficients right we're only talking about the powers we don't care about the numbers in front that's like a leading coefficient that's going to help us now I did use the kind of leading coefficient test I kept that in there because um, that's something that you're going to want to make sure that you know um, pretty much by memory because you're going to be using it kind of a lot and it's a really handy and helpful tool to really kind of visualize how everything, how the end behavior is going to be. Okay, so let's just kind of work um, one problem at, it, at a time. Now, the first thing here is I have 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 2x. And um, first thing you notice here is my powers and you can see my powers are in descending order. So it's in descending order, which is good. Then, um, largest power, so therefore what I'm going to want to do now is label my degree, which is 4, and my leading coefficient, which is 5. So I have a degree of 4 and I have a leading coefficient of 5. Basically then what I do is I go over to this idea and I say, all right, is my degree odd or is it even? Well, 4 is an even number. So it's either going to be is my leading coefficient positive or negative? Well, coefficient is positive. So therefore, I kind of bring them together, and I can determine that my end behavior is going to rise left and is going to rise right. So rise left, rise right. Okay. So we don't really know what the graph is going to do in between on this graph. We just basically know that the end behavior is going to rise left, rise right. Um, another way to write this is what we call interval notation is you can say that as x approaches negative infinity, that means as I move to the left of a graph, let's look at it this way. So if I'm rising left and rising right, as I move to the left, my f of x rises, to, rises up. So as x approaches negative infinity, then f of x also approaches infinity. And as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches. So as uh, my x values approach infinity, f of x also approaches infinity. And I'm going to go through that all. Um, depends on really the test. I make sure that for my pre-calculus students, they know interval notation because that's more than likely what they're going to see um, on any kind of test. And they want to make sure they understand interval notation. Whereas algebra 2, um, I'm not as rigid. I'm just made more concerned about them identifying you know, the end behavior. Rise left, rise right. And that's kind of it. Um, all right, let's go and work on the next one. So in the next one, you can see, again, we have exponents in descending order. Good. But now, you can see my degree here is 3, and my leading coefficient is now negative. And it's a fraction, and that is OK. Because again, when we're looking at degree, well, now you can see my degree is 3, so it's odd. And my leading coefficient, who cares if it's a fraction? Is it positive or negative? Well, it's negative. So now, my graph rises to the left. So let's erase this now. Now my graph rises to the left and falls right. So all right. Rises left, falls right. But to use interval notation, as my x values go to the left, right, go towards negative infinity, what are my f of x values or y values doing? They're going up to infinity. As my x values go towards positive infinity, my f of x values are going down or towards negative infinity. So the way I'd write that is as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. OK, so now let's get to the next one. Now this one, you can see, is not in descending order. You can see my powers here. The only powers that I have is 8 and 9. Well, they're not from largest to smallest, right? So I'm going to first rewrite this. f of x equals um, 4x to the ninth plus 2x to the eighth plus 5. Now it's in descending order, so I can determine that my degree 
is equal to 9, and my leading coefficient is equal to 4. Again, we have a degree, which is odd, but now my leading coefficient is positive. So my graph is going to, now my graph is going to fall left, rise right. So I can just write fall left, rise right. OK, easy enough. However, nobody wants to write it in interval notation. So let's just go ahead and look at it, though. Again, as my x values approach negative infinities, basically what you're doing is saying as x approaches negative infinity and as x approaches positive infinity. So the x values, as x goes to the left and as x goes to the right. Well, as x goes to the left, which is negative infinity, f of x goes towards negative infinity. And as x goes towards positive infinity, f of x also goes to positive infinity. OK, last one here is um, x to the fourth plus 5. That is in descending order. Uh, my degree in this case is 4. And my leading coefficient here is going to equal negative 1. Because there's, there's just a negative, right? So remember, that's negative 1. Um, again, so then we look at degree. 4, is that odd or even? That's even. Leading coefficient is negative 1, so obviously it's negative. So my graph here is going to fall left and fall right. Okay. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very important to have this diagram um, memorized, really. I mean, read it a couple times before you go to bed and before you wake up, and you'll have it memorized. It's not really difficult to memorize. It just kind of takes a little practice. Um, but it is something you're going to want to be able to know kind of very quickly. And so again, last thing. So my graph now falls left and falls right. So you can see that I'm going to say the same thing. As x approaches infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you um, identify the degree and leading co coefficient of a function, as well as use the leading coefficient test to determine your m behavior of a polynomial function. Thanks.